Hello and welcome to the CFM 56-5B training session number four. In this training session, we are going to discuss thrust reversal system operation. In the short minutes, we are going to discuss thrust reverse type operation, controls and computers, latches, indications, and finally, basic maintenance deactivation procedures. So let's start now with the thrust reversal system type. The thrust reversal system type is of the aerodynamic blockage type. It consists of four pivoting blocker doors, which stop and redirect fan discharge airflow. Two doors are installed on each engine C duct, and the thrust reversal operation is only possible on ground. Number two, thrust reverse operation. The thrust reverser system is hydraulically supplied by the corresponding hydraulic pump on the engine itself. And the thrust reverser is isolated from the hydraulic supply by a mean of a shut off valve. This is the third line of defense. And keep in mind that each door is operated by a hydraulic actuator. So let's move on to thrust reverser system latches. The actuators receive fluid from the hydraulic control unit, which is controlled by the electronic control unit, ECU. Two independent latch mechanisms maintain each pivoting blocker door in the stowed position. One latch inside the actuator itself, and the second latch with the door. And keep in mind that the door latches are hydraulically released in series, at the beginning of the deploy sequence before each pivoting blocker door, actuator latch is released. Number four, thrust reverse system controls and computers. Basically, the thrust reverser system is controlled through the electronic control unit from the two reverser latching levers located on the throttle control levers. The hydraulic control unit has a pressurizing valve and a directional valve to select deploy or stow mode. And the directional valve is operated to deploy only. Again, for third defense line purposes, the spoiler elevator computers, six, have previously opened the shutoff valve and the hydraulic pressure is supplied to the hydraulic control unit. Then the engine interface unit permits reverser deployment by energization of the inhibition relay. So the directional valve can be opened now by the electronic control unit. And keep in mind, to command the thrust reverser, the electronic control unit always in need of an aircraft on ground signal supplied by the landing gear control and the interface units, LGCIUs. Number four, thrust reverser system indication. To indicate the actual state of the thrust reverser, it is shown on the ECAM warning display. You can find reverser indication in the middle of the N1 dial. And the signals come from the stow and deploy position switches. And keep in mind that the reverse thrust is allowed when reversers are deployed. Finally, for deactivation procedures and the maintenance procedures. To help troubleshooting, a reverser test can be performed through the multi-purpose control display unit. And for maintenance purposes or to increase aircraft dispatch, the hydraulic control unit is fitted with a deactivation lever to deactivate the thrust reverser system. Also for mechanical deactivation, four lookout bolts should also be installed. And keep in mind, before working on the thrust reverser, you need to hydraulically deactivate it from the hydraulic control unit. Otherwise, it can accidentally operate and cause serious injuries to personnel and or damage to the reverser. This is our training session for the thrust reverser system. Please stay tuned to the next training session to discuss thrust reverser system management from Cairo, Egypt, your host was Haysam Ali. This is my aviation training solutions. Thank you, and I will see you again.